No way. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, please. And uh, again, um, this is Tools of the Harvest. My next Tools of the Harvest is it. I'm done. And uh, the next one is Salvation. Tools of the Harvest, Salvation. And um, I'm preaching out of Romans chapter 10. But uh, I want to talk to you this morning. My sermon title is all about prayer, but it's called Where Prayer is Focused, Power Falls. I've preached it here before, but I... And modified it quite a bit. Um, if you, how many people have ever heard that sermon where prayer is focused, power falls? Uh, I don't think you have. You might not have. I uh, know I was well before you. Canons was an old nine that I preached it the last time. But anyways, Ephesians chapter six. Let's all stand, please. We're going to read uh, uh, responsibly down from verse ten to verse eighteen. So Ephesians chapter six, please. Verse 10, let's read that verse 10 together. We'll read every, one, uh, every other one down to verse 18. Ready? Finally, my brethren, be, let's read it together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against ru the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to you, stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and have on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking on the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fire of the wicked, and take on the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Verse 18 is my text. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Listen. Listen to this next statement, please. If you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this next statement. We Christians need to start praying more. In general, we Christians need to start praying more. We usually pray when things go wrong and don't pray when things are right. In this day and age, we got prayer apps, we got prayer things, everything we have in our phones and at our fingertips, we can use to pray. And it is so sad that we don't pray. Enough. Um, let me ask you a question. How many people ate breakfast this morning? Raise your hand. Did you eat breakfast this morning? You didn't eat breakfast this morning? Did you eat breakfast this morning? Did you pray? Mm -hmm. More than rub a dub dub. Thanks for the grace. Thank God. You know, I, I prayed for the farmer. I had chicken. Or sorry, I had, I, had, I, had, I had an egg. No blue. I had an egg. <laughs> I had a bagel. Did I have a bagel? Did I have a bagel? What did I have? Oh, I had egg. I had, uh, yes, or a couple of days ago, I had egg. I had a bagel, and I had some, what do they call those things? Berries, that's it. I prayed for the farmer. I prayed for the, uh, the baker, and I prayed for the picker. Oftentimes, we don't pray enough. When the going gets rough, we start praying. What about when the going is good? A Christian is to be saved and to be conformed in the image of who? Jesus Christ. Say it with me now. Christ. Thanks. One more time. Christ. If the Christian life is the life of Christ, or is to be the life of Christ, uh, reproduced in the obedient response to the word of God then we must not only do what Christ, spend the time with what Christ uh, 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 
spend more of our time transforming our mind to what Christ not only said, but what he did. Acts 1 1 says, Former treaties, in the former treaties have I taught, have I made with Theophilus, that all or sorry, all of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. If we are to be like Christ, we must get the mind of Christ. Amen? We must have the actions of Christ. We must do what he did and not do what he didn't do. Amen? It is time that we start tapping in to the power of prayer. Where prayer is focused, power falls. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 says, it tells us, I exhort therefore that first of all, that first of all, that first of all, one more time, that how much of all? First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all that. God wants us to go and get on our knees first not last. You know, we get a cold, we run to the doctor instead of running to Dr. Jesus. Amen? Hello? We, you know, this day and age, we can go, you know, you got a twitch in your face. Uh, and I did this. I, I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know what the twitch in my face is. I got a twitch in my, my right side of this face. And, uh, and I don't know what this is. But Lord, I need you to take it away from me. It bothers me. And then I went on the internet. Big mistake. How many people have ever sought for something? You know, you had a medical thing and you sought for what it might have been on the internet. How many people remember that stupid? They, I heard everything from brain aneurysm to caffeine. You see brain aneurysm. <laughs> you know, hello. My wife probably thinks I need a brain to have that aneurysm. Ready to take your agreement with her. Amen. A.J. Gordon said, There is more you can do after you pray, but there's nothing more you can do till you pray. That is so true. A.J. H. Joy said, I'd rather teach one man to pray than ten men to preach. Joe Henry Hankins said the early church had one solution to all their problems, prayer. John Alley said all your failures are prayer failures. I like what our missionary Becky Pope said. God can work through you or work through you with one prayer than a thousand dollars. It is so true. Prayer is the mind of Christ. Prayer is still important to him, and it was back, and it was, it was so important to him back then, it's still important to him, to him today. Prayer, I believe, next to salvation, is the most sacred thing you own. How did you get saved? By what? Prayer. Believing in your heart and praying to God. Say, God, I, I'm a merciful wretch. I need your salvation. See, I believe prayer is very important to God. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have mentioned the word prayer 114 times in the Bible. Praying 20 times in the Bible. Pray 313 times in the Bible. Ask 109 times in the Bible. Asking is, is, is seven times in the Bible. And ask is 119 times. See, prayer is just asking God. Uh, there's a book called Ask. Uh, 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 um, John R. Ash wrote a book. Um, oh, I had the name in my head and it's gone now. A great book on prayer. I'll think of it, I'll think of it this afternoon at dinner. Asking and receiving, that's it. 
Asking and Receiving, amazing book on prayer. Get the book, get the book, get the book. If I can find a PDF book, a copy of the book, I will, I will print it off for you and give it to you. You need to get the book. Do you pray? I'm not talking about, in my notes, I talked about being a praying church. I'm not, I'm I'm not talking about being a praying church, because I know our church prays, but do you pray? Do you pray? Do you pray enough, or do you just pray a little? Jesus was a praying person. And if we're to learn to be the best prayer warrior we can, and as if we ought to be, we ought to learn from the best. Amen? I believe that there's something to learn about the, uh, something about learning the Lord's Prayer. Now, we don't, the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer, by the way. It is a way to pray. Now, you know, they chant the, the oh, Father, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. God says that's a stink to his nose. The prayer of Jabez. The prayer, what's the, uh, name some of the Catholic prayers that you're, you guys are talking about. Well, not you guys, not you. That Hail Mary. The Hail Mary, full of grace, and the prayer to the dead, and the prayer to the Pope, and the prayer to this, the prayer to that, and the prayer to this. How about, oh, Lord, save my soul? I like what you, I like what your uh, your your uncle said. Um, the Godfather. I, what's his name? Rudy. 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 Man, he's awesome. I love Rudy. Rudy said to me, he says, "Where do you get all these prayers?" Did he? And he asked you that. Where does he get all these prayers from? The heart. I don't have a prayer book. I did uh, Corinne Smith's funeral many many years ago. They gave me a book of prayers. I don't know if you'd like to see this, but <laughs> no thanks. I, I pray from the heart. See, if the question that the disciples posed to Jesus was good enough for them, it ought to be good enough for us. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, they asked the Lord, teach us to pray. Do you realize it's the only thing they asked him, they asked him to teach him? Lord, teach us to pray. And they said, well, he went on with the Lord's Prayer, but again, it was not that you chant those things, our Father who art in heaven, who are you praying to? God, Father, hallowed be thy name. God, you're awesome. And you know there's no other name under, under heaven that I'm going to pray to. Thy kingdom come, oh, glory to God, you're in heaven. Man, I can't wait till I get there. Thy will be done, hey, Lord. I just, man. I want your will be done. I'm asking you. I'm asking you a question. Do you pray? Do, do, do you pray? A lot of people are asking me this this week. What are you praying for with your mom? Just God's will be done. I'd love to see my mom healed, totally healed, live for her to live another fifty years. Be seventy. She'll be seventy-two at the end of the month. I love to see her another 30, 40 years. But that's, I just want her to stop hurting. I just want her to stop hurting. That's my prayer. Lord, stop her hurting. Stop her hurting. You know, when your dad, that whole week, everybody was praying, keep your dad alive, keep your dad alive, keep your dad alive. I was praying, Lord, have you, have, show people, show people that you are real. And that you saved his soul. That was my whole prayer. Very rarely did I pray for your dad to be alive. I just prayed, Lord, show people. Show people. You are who you are. You're not this. You're this. You're a talking God. I think we all can agree that Jesus was a powerful person. He oozed the Holy Spirit. What was the secret? What was the secret to him being so powerful? Do you realize he came in the form of man? 
Well, he did. I said, well, he was sinless because he was God. I said, no, he was sinless because he chose to be. He knew no sin. Why? Because he walked with God all the time. More often than not, I believe God in the quiet time, or in the quiet time, when he was not praying. He prayed and slept. The secret to Christ's power was his prayer life. The Gospels recorded 15 occasions where when Jesus prayed. We're going to look through the book of Luke this morning and probably next week as well. Of where, occasions of what Jesus prayed about. See, again, if, if prayer life was important to Jesus, it must be important to us. And just as these 12 times I'm going to share with you over the next couple of Sundays, it was important to God, it must be important to you and I to have those times of prayer during these times when Jesus prayed. The reason why I'm so upset today is because people don't pray. The first time when Jesus prayed, Jesus prayed for power to do God's will. Number one, Jesus prayed for power to do God's will. Luke 3, 21, again, we're going to be in the book of Luke for the rest of the morning, for the most part, anyways. It says here, now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying that the heaven was open, or sorry, the heaven was open. See, there is a direct correlation between the amount of time we spend in prayer as believers and the amount of clarity we have concerning the will of God. Oftentimes, I'll ask a missionary that comes in, where's your call verse in the Bible? And how often have you, how, how long did you pray for God's direction? There are too many, listen to me, there are too many Christians that are on a feeling will. Do you know what I mean by that? Well, I feel okay enough to go to church. I guess I'll go to church. I'll be honest with you. Right now, I have the most violent headache. I am exhausted. I'd like to be home with my feet up curled up and under a blanket with my big fluffy pillow and my cat fur next to me sleeping. If that's how I feel, this is where I'd be. You know, now every time, uh, listen to me, I did not feel like at four, I get up at four o'clock on, on Friday morning to drive three and a half hours and I certainly did not feel like driving back three and a half hours in the snowstorm five minutes. I didn't feel it, but I knew it was God's will. I knew I needed to get back here for Friday night for Saturday morning. I knew that. If we are only going by how we feel, oftentimes we will do God's will. If we don't take time to be with God, it will hurt us in the less, long distance and even in the short distance. You'll hurt yourself. There are so many, too many people out there that don't pray and they don't know what God will for them and they're walking around aimlessly doing nothing. And that is so sad. See, God saved you for a purpose. When I asked Freddie to do the audio, I didn't say, Freddie, I want you to do the audio. Will you do it? I said, Freddie, I want you to pray about it. Did you go home and pray about it? Didn't take him a whole week. It was a, I think you called me on the Tuesday. We talked on the Tuesday night, and you said, Pastor, I'll do it. I want him to, I want him to pray about it. When I asked Sarah to, 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 to do the finances, to, 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 to do the finances, to take him over, to, so I don't have anything to do with him, so then if the government comes and knocks on, they're going to arrest her. Teasing. I told her to pray about it. I know if I ask, and I ask any of you to do anything.
anything, you do it. Freddie, I, I, I need you to, after church, walk up to Walmart, go buy two, $200 worth of stuff, come back and walk back. Would you do it? He probably would if I asked him to do it. Now, I won't ask him to do it. I'd say, Freddie, drive up, spend $5,000 worth of stuff, take it out of Sarah's bank account, and uh, it bounce, but, uh, <laughs> but I'll get it inside. Do you want to get in the will of God? You know, Adam and Eve, they walk with God in the cool of the day. Man, I would love to have been there. I would love to have been Adam and Eve. They walk with God. But you, you can walk with God. It's great to, have you ever sat there and talked with God? You know, sat in a chair and talked with God like he was, and, and, and was right there? Rudy was in the room one time praying after I stepped out. He followed me out down the hallway. I need to talk to you. I said, okay, am I in trouble? He said, no. He said, it was almost like you and him were talking. He said, what do you mean? I said, I was talking to Freddie. He says, I'm not talking about Freddie. He says, I'm talking about God. When you prayed, it was almost like you and him were just talking to each other, just as I'm talking to, hey, Freddie, how you doing? <laughs> and uh, I, I said, because that's what I believe that you were talking to. How often when you pray do you stop and go, and stop in awe and realize who, of whom you're talking to? If Prime Minister Harper called you on the phone, would you go, hey, Stevie, how you doing? Barack Obama, well, President Obama called you. Hey, dude, what's up, man? If somebody in the position of power, you know, when I go see, when I go see uh, and, and meet with, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Dave Lillette. I don't go, hey, Dave. How you doing? And he doesn't go, hey, Cam, how you doing? I said, well, hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Levac, how you doing today? I don't go, I don't go like this. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Yo, part of people in the house, I don't do that. What's up, man? Yo, what's up? Yeah, sitting some skin, man. Yeah. I don't do that. Because you know, when we talk to God, I mean, we ought to remember who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll just say, hey, Dad, how are you doing today? And people say, oh, that's just sacrilegious. No, that's okay. Because you know why? I know who I'm talking to. Number two, Jesus prayed in private for power in his public ministry. Again, Jesus prayed in private for power in his public ministry. Uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 16, it says, And he withdrew himself in the wilderness and prayed. See, Jesus' public ministry was uh, pretty good, I think. And it was found in the, the, the secret to his success was found in his private ministry. And the same applies for us. See, praying, we forget, is a ministry. If you want to be, if you want to be a prayer warrior, you must pray in private. If you want power in your ministry, pray in private. This morning I woke up again. I went and I prayed, and I didn't go. Oh, hold on, let's wake up the kids. Let's wake up the kids. Hey, let me call Freddie. Freddie, I want to get you on the phone. Let me three-way call with Sarah and Jim. Okay, no, and let's pray. No, I prayed in private. Nobody knew I was praying. I was in the shower. I was praying. I was brushing my tooth. I was praying, combing my hair, I, uh, uh, waxing my forehead, you know, shining it up. I was praying. You know why? Because I want power in my public ministry. Walking from down here, I was praying. From the car, I was praying. I don't know about you, but I want God to use my ministry. And if he's going to use it, i got to seek his power. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
you know, with our computer there, that one program. I don't know what I I, I don't know what's wrong. I, I clicked. I know I clicked something. I know what I clicked. I know what I clicked, but I clicked it wrong. I gotta try to get it back. And I know how. I know what I'm gonna do. Who am I gonna call? <laughs> Pass the pardon. I probably will. You know why? He, he knows. Who are we going to call when we need to know the secrets of the Lord? Lord. The pastor must pray for the people to be fed and souls to be saved every day. Twelve times in the gospel, Jesus took his disciples away from the crowds and prayed. I believe that ministry burnout, not, by the way, it doesn't only result in pastors, it results in people as well. Ministry burnout results from using most of your time in public ministry and very little to a lot of time alone with God. You know, oftentimes, you know, people, people tease, tease me. I, I, I have been teased, razzed upside down and backwards in the last 12, 11 years or almost 11 years. We only work four hours a week. Yeah, that's a public ministry. A lot of times I'm, I'm behind closed doors and I'm praying. There's a lot of times I'll be I'll be driving. I'll just go for a drive to where I don't know, don't care. I just go for a drive and I pray. I'll walk around Walmart or walk around the mall and I'll pray. How many hours have you spent in prayer this week? This past week. Time now was not rub a dub dub. Thanks for grab me, God. Number three, and I'll leave it with this: Jesus prayed all night for power, for the power of God when the opposition grew. Jesus prayed all night for the power of God when the opposition grew. And they, verse Luke chapter six, verse eleven and twelve says, and they were all filled with madness and communed one with another that they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out in the mountain and prayed and continued all night in prayer with God, in prayer to God. See, they'll either get bored and walk away or your prayers will convict their hearts that you're doing right. Do you realize that? I have had pastor. I have had two pastors that said to me, I attacked you wrongfully. My prayers were for them so that God wouldn't see their hearts. I didn't attack them. I just prayed. See, Satan doesn't attack programs, churches, or people until they've begun to impact people's lives. Why do you think our church is getting attacked? We're impacting people's lives. It's because of our prayer time and our service meeting. Satan will always try to stop the shepherding process. He will. He will always try to stop the shepherding process. See, in this passage that I just read, Jesus was about to choose his 12 disciples and to shepherd them. We should always, my friends, be on the offense because defenses get conquered. See, in the football, the offense has the upper hand. They know the play. The defense reacts to the play. We must, and by the way, if we're not always on the offense, we may get defeated. Defense doesn't score, score points. Usually. And if we're on the offense, we will be praying. It's like taking vitamins for a cold. Before a cold. My dear friends, in this day and age, there are a lot of things providing us for our time. I gave you three of the twelve, and I'll give you probably three or four more next week. But there are a lot of things by for our time. This afternoon, what, what are you going to do? 
Well, Mongo Costa. Well, I'm gonna go to Walmart. I'm gonna go hang out at the mall. I'm gonna take a nap. <clears throat> Where are you sitting in your prayer time? You gonna watch the hockey game this afternoon? All those are fine, well, and dandy, except I don't believe you should shop on Sunday. They're all fine, well, and dandy. Where's your prayer? Again, let me share those three quotes, three quotes that I gave, four quotes that I gave you. There is more you, there is more you can do after you pray, but there's nothing you can do, you can do until you pray. Rather teach one man to pray than ten men to preach. The early church had one solution to all their problems. Prayer. And all your failures are prayer failures. My question to you today simply is are you praying? Enough. 